If general stores existed every five or six miles throughout the countryside, one-room schoolhouses existed every two or three. They were everywhere because they had to be. After the Civil War, public schools became tax-supported, and in order for country students to attend, the schools had to be within walking or riding distance, about two miles from every farmhouse. Every county was uh, punctuated with these tiny one-room schools. Most of those in, uh, by, the, by the end of the 19th century were frame buildings made of sawed lumber, but there were still a few uh, log uh, schoolhouses in, uh, throughout southern Illinois and in Pope County. Pope County had 75 school districts. They stood on donated land and served however many students managed to attend who weren't required to work on the farm. I went to school about half the time, so my interest wasn't too great in school until by the time I got ready to go to high school, I realized that had to stop. I needed to get an education, so I refused to uh, miss school to work on the farm. My father went to Grasty School, and they had 80 some odd kids there. 80 kids, one teacher, no lunch service, no uh, janitorial service. The teacher did it all. There were eight of us in the entire school. Uh, my teacher was Mrs. Anthus, and her husband brought her to school every morning, and they came very early, and they cleaned the schoolroom. They built the fire, and he helped her do all of those things. And then when it was time for the students to come in, he would leave and she would teach. And then he would come back in the evening and get her. And they really had a, it wasn't just teaching school. They had a full day of hard work. Essie L. Baker's teacher contract says just that. She is to do her own janitor work for Polk County District Number 48. The seven-month contract paid Essie $50 a month and required she keep attendance records and preserve in good condition and order the schoolhouse, grounds, and furniture. Written in 1919, the contract also says Essie can be dismissed for incompetency, cruelty, negligence, immorality, or other contract violations. I know mom got her teacher certificate for graduating from the eighth grade and going down to Brownville south of Golconda and the county superintendent taught a class for five weeks and gave the students an examination. If they passed the examination, he gave them a teacher certificate. If an eighth grade graduate wanted to go to high school in Golconda, they would need a way to pay for room and board. The country roads made a daily commute next to impossible. For these reasons, an education beyond the eighth grade was unlikely. Yet, some students continued their education through the creative use of what they already had. I know several that simply went back and repeated the eighth grade. Ruth Jones, for example, took the exam out of the eighth grade, went back the next year to the seventh grade. Nothing to do except go to school. For most Polk County families, Sunday was set aside to worship, usually at a small frame church like the old home church near Eddyville. 